Hello you guys, welcome to today's vlog. We have quite a busy one ahead. I actually just got home from doing some shopping. I'm gonna do a haul of everything that I got. But this weekend I'm hosting a very like small intimate friendsgiving slash cousins giving because it's mostly my cousins and then a few a few friends as well. Um but I have been wanting to do a vlog like this where I kind of show you guys what I get to host something. And I had been meaning to do this back in August the last time I hosted something, but I was like, no. We'll do it this time around because I was super busy then. But um, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys that. And then also, we are doing an updated Southern baked mac and cheese recipe in this video. Because I'm doing Friendsgiving, I'm going to prep my mac and cheese, show you guys the updated version of what I do there too. Um, I also have to finish up decorating the tree and some things. I think that's gonna be in a separate vlog though, in my Decorate With Me vlog. And then what else are we doing? I have to do a lot of stuff. I have to clean up the garage. I have to clean the house, finish decorating, do this haul for you guys. And then tomorrow I have to prep my mac and cheese. I'm also doing mashed potatoes cornbread i'm gonna try to do yams this year for the first time so it's gonna be a pretty busy one anyway let's get into it so i just got back from walmart walmart is like if you're gonna be hosting just get yourself at walmart if you go to target i love target don't get me wrong it's like my favorite and it's my happy place but for hosting i highly recommend going somewhere like walmart because you'll end up spending way less for the same things that you would get at target Totally up to you, but that's just typically what I like to do. Um, so I got a mixture of like stuff for the Friendsgiving and then holiday stuff too. So I ended up picking up some wine. We'll start with the stuff that I'm using for the Friendsgiving. So I picked up two Stella Rosa peach. This has been my favorite lately. I would have gotten the Roscato from Target, but I didn't want to make a second pit stop. Maybe I'll go tomorrow or later tonight to get that too but i got two bottles of that i also i'm gonna try this simply homemade cornbread mix i feel like i'm kind of far from you guys but i got this cornbread mix they did have the jiffy one but i was like let me just try this one this one looks a little a little different and then i also got some chicken stock because this we're gonna need for some chicken cooking stock for the mac and cheese and I got two of them because I have a feeling I'm going to end up making mac and cheese for Thanksgiving as well. So I might as well just get that out of the way. And then I got two of these burlap 10 feet table things. I'm going to use these as a table runner for the Friendsgiving this weekend. I don't even know what I'm going to use to decorate. I think I'm going to keep it pretty simple because a lot of the stuff that I had in the garage to decorate, I ended up giving to my mom or donating it because I'm trying to get rid of some things. You guys, most of you guys know I'm moving next month. So I'm trying to just work with what I have right now. So I just picked those up. I also got some large elbow pasta because I'm gonna use this for the mac and cheese as well. This is for the yams some sugar because I didn't surprisingly have any mozzarella cheese sharp cheddar I'll get into like the actual ingredients when we do the mac and cheese part but I got different types of cheeses that we're going to use for that too two types of plates these I'm going to use to set the table these are a little bit nicer these I got at Walmart too these are uh, just clear dinner plates they're a little bit fancier than the you know white and then maybe I'll add like a cute napkin on top. I know Target has some Thanksgiving ones, so I might have to end up making a pit stop there, but we'll see how I end up uh, decorating that. And then also some cane sugar. This is for, cause I'm doing a drink sponsorship. So I'm gonna make a cocktail using these. So I got that for that, some half and half and some cream cheese for the mac and cheese. For the yams, I got some ground nutmeg. And then we have some, just stuff that I needed here at home. The Dave's Killer Bread, white bread. I'm gonna try this coffee creamer. I had coffee this morning and I haven't had breakfast, so I'm like 
a little bit shaky. I just ordered Chipotle to get delivered because again, I didn't want to make another stop. And I was like, you know what? You deserve a little Chipotle delivery <laughs> today. So anyways, um, I got this Frosted Sugar Cookie Buddy the Elf Creamer. I've never tried it, but sugar cookie sounds good for like a holiday drink. So I picked this up. They had it at Walmart. Just some 2% milk because I like to use that for cereal sometimes. <laughs> Some non-dairy caramel macchiato Starbucks creamer. This is one of my favorite creamers. And then I also bought some things for a gift guide that I'm going to film. I usually don't really shop at Walmart too much, but I was just browsing through the holiday aisles and I found some like nice holiday things there. So I will show you guys that in the um, gift guide that I film. And then I also found some ornaments there. Since I'm gonna finish up decorating, I was like, let me just check out Walmart, see what they have. And this goes with my theme, so I kind of figured I will grab two of them to use for that. This is more gift guide stuff right here. So I'm gonna put this aside. So I got stuff to film a gift guide, and then I also found a few gifts for family members while I was there. I snatched some up too, so I'm gonna start wrapping some of those. I'm trying to get ahead this year because when I tell you people are buying everything up, I'm not kidding. So then some cups for the drinks for this weekend. Potatoes for mashed potatoes, because I'm also making mashed potatoes. And then I have the sweet potatoes for the yams. Some cookies, I just bought some cookies from Walmart's little bakery section to keep it simple, but I'm gonna put these out on a cute tray for this weekend too. I got the snickerdoodle and the chocolate chip cookies. I'll just put them on a tray just in case anybody wants something sweet after they eat. And in the middle of all of this, I am supposed to post my decorate with me video today on YouTube. And I'm just like trying not to get stressed out because I still have to edit it and upload it. And it's already 1.20 and I still have to eat. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. I'm like trying not to stress out about it. Okay. Anyway, so these are the Nespresso pods I bought. Usually I buy caramel cookie and the, um, what is it called? Bianco Figuero. It is like a two shots of espresso pod. And I picked up two different ones this time. So I did pick up the Bianco one that I'm talking about, which is this one. And I like to use this one when I do my vanilla lattes, which is usually what I prefer. But I also picked up this double espresso Chiaro from Nespresso, looks like this. I'll show you the pods too. And then a coffee one, this one is hazelnut, or I should say hazelino muffin. Looks like that, let me open these up. So this is the one I usually get for my vanilla lattes. Like I said, it's two shots of espresso. It looks just like this. I got this one too. I think this is a little bit stronger. It's just the brown pod. Of course, my camera's not gonna focus right now. And then I also got, um, this is a coffee pod. So it usually serves a little bit more but it looks like this. And this is the hazel, hazelnut one. I've never tried this one or the brown one, but I decided to give it a try. This is my favorite one. And then this is also the newer one that I got this brown double shot. So these are the three that I picked up. I am about to devour 
this read. I feel like I'm about to pass out so dramatic, but when you don't eat anything, at least for me, and then you have coffee and that's all you've had, it is like you're setting yourself up for failure. So good. Just got done shooting a campaign that I needed to get done and I'm slowly checking things off my list which is good because this morning I woke up and I was like how the heck am I about to get all of this stuff done um, what I'm trying to do is get all my videos done and all my content done before next week because I want to take next week off or Thanksgiving week week I should say because I don't know when you guys will be watching this video but I want to take Thanksgiving week off 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 <laughs> at least from videos but anyway um what am i oh i need to get this thing so we're gonna finally get to this mac and cheese i'm gonna prep it tonight and that way i can have it ready to go for tomorrow the lighting looks crazy that way i can have it ready to go for tomorrow and not be running around like a chicken with my head cut off because I am also going to attempt to make yams for the first time. I have this cookbook that I'm gonna work from and then um, what else am I making? Mashed potatoes and cornbread. So knocking out the mac and cheese tonight and prepping it I think will make things a lot easier because it's a little bit more tedious than everything else I would say. Let's start with everything that you're gonna need in order to make the mac and cheese. So of course you're gonna need a bag of large elbow pasta. This is a 16 ounce bag. And then you're gonna need your cheeses. You can get the block cheese or you can get the shredded cheese, whatever you prefer. For most of the cheese, I got the shredded kind just because I'm trying to make it easy and quick for myself. So this is Colby Jack cheese, sharp cheddar and mozzarella cheese. I also have Havarti cheese and Gouda cheese in this bowl right here because the, the Gouda and the Havarti sometimes don't come already like this sometimes they're just in the block where they're in like the sliced one so i just kind of cut it up myself or shred it with my cheese grater and then um chicken stock black pepper paprika seasoned salt garlic powder parsley flakes onion powder half a stick of salted butter i use salted just because i like a little more flavor but you can use unsalted if you want to and then half a block of cream cheese or four ounces you'll also need a tiny bit of flour and then some evaporated milk not condensed milk evaporated milk and then that's pretty much it uh, for the cheeses of course you can pick whatever cheese you want I have found that these are like the best combination. I've tried Velveeta, I've tried other types of cheddars, and it's just, that's the trickiest thing with the mac and cheese is finding the right cheese that you like for the taste. So that's just what I use. But first step, we're gonna move over here is to start boiling the pasta. This part's pretty easy. You just take your chicken stock completely, pour it in there. And then I am gonna turn this on medium heat. And this is what I'm going to boil my pasta in. And sometimes I'll do one of those cartons of chicken stock. Sometimes I'll do two. It just depends. Pasta. Yeah, let's go ahead and add one more carton of the chicken stock. And this is just going to give it a little bit more flavor instead of just using like water with salt, which that works too. Why is this not? <laughs> that works too. It's completely up to you. And then you just let it cook for a few minutes. You do not want to cook this all the way. You actually want it to still be a little bit uncooked because it's going to cook thoroughly when you pop it in the oven. So we're going to let this cook or boil for about like seven minutes or so. And I'm just draining out the chicken stock. I would use a strainer, but my strainer is a little too small for the amount of mac and cheese that I have. So I'm just gonna put this to the side, let it cool off a little bit. So it's already pretty much cooked up. This is where you take your half stick of butter, throw it in there. You wanna let that melt completely. 
And then once that's melted, you're gonna add your two tablespoons of flour. But of course, make sure that this butter is completely melted. You guys can't really see, but oh, let me turn this side. The butter is fully melted. And then add in your two tablespoons of flour. And keep it on like low-ish heat. Mix it all together. You don't want to let this sit. You definitely want to make sure to mix it all in with the butter. Now that it's a little bit thicker, you can see it's not as runny. I'm keeping this on low heat, adding a cup and a half of half and half. So there's a cup. and a cup of the evaporated milk. Almost the entire can, to be honest, but there you go. Now to add the cheeses. First, we're gonna start with the cream cheese, then the Gouda and the Havarti. These are the first ones that I'm gonna use. The rest of the cheeses, I'm going to put in, um, once we put it in the dish, you'll see right now what I'm talking about, but just mixing that all together. Once this completely, um, melts down, then we can add our seasonings. And for the seasonings, it's going to be two, like two tables, not tablespoons, <laughs> two teaspoons of the parsley, the onion powder, garlic powder, seasoned salt, paprika. All that stuff is about two teaspoons. You can do like one or like, yeah, like one of the pepper. I mainly just do everything to taste. All right, one tablespoon, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons about like, I'll do more or less two of each. I'm just gonna do like one of the parsley. We'll do like one and a half of the seasoning salt. It really depends on my mood. Like some days, some days I'll do more, some days I'll do less. It really depends. And I'll do one of the smoked paprika because this is mainly more so for color. Here's how all of that looks once it's in there. And then we're just gonna mix it up. Once your cheese sauce is done, you can start to pour in the pasta and you're pretty much just gonna mix this all together. So you do a nice layer of the mac and cheese on the bottom and then you start to add in your cheese, these cheeses right here, the sharp, the mozzarella, and the Colby Jack. I mainly use all the bag of the sharp cheddar and like half a bag of the mozzarella so i have my first layer there i'm gonna do some sharp cheddar cheese some mozzarella and once you do a nice coat sometimes i'll even add breadcrumbs in between each layer they didn't have the ones that i normally get so i didn't get it but sometimes i'll even add a little bit of bread breadcrumbs again to give it a little bit more of a crispy uh taste like a texture thing once again it's completely up to you but that's also another little like addition that i'll add here and there that's fine and then again just do all the cheeses Also add a little bit of the paprika on top and once that's done it's ready to pop in the oven you want to preheat your oven to 350 375 and you're gonna let it bake in there for about 
25 to 30 minutes it just depends on how crispy you want it to be i usually leave it for about 30 minutes And then I have this assorted cake that I found at the grocery store too because I'm trying to make it quick. Okay, I'm already doing a lot of cooking so we're gonna keep the dessert simple. So I, I don't know if I showed you guys but I got the cookies from, oh, I, I did show you. Cookies from Walmart. I got chocolate chip, snickerdoodle. They're not homemade or anything but it'll do the trick. And then I'm gonna put some of this. I have some more in here. So I'm gonna put some of this cranberry cashew almond trail mix in some little containers. And then I have my potatoes and the sweet potatoes. I'm not gonna do bingo. However, I am gonna do a sticker underneath three of the chairs. So people are gonna be completely sitting down and then when everybody's sitting, I'm gonna be like, okay, you guys, before we eat or all that makes or after we eat i'll be like check underneath your chairs if your chair has a sticker underneath that means you get to pick a little prize and so the prizes we have a target gift card with some candy and then a chick-fil-a gift card with some candy and then i found this this is a hot cocoa mix it comes with this cute snowman mug the spoon marshmallows and then the hot chocolate mix is somewhere in there too and then as far as the table, on this table, I'm thinking of putting all of the desserts and the games. You can see the games that I have right here for us to play. So I bought some Uno cards because I have Uno, but the jumbo one and that one can be kind of annoying to play with sometimes. So I bought the regular size Uno. I have Taboo. I have these, it says these cards will get you drunk, these are funny. I also have this table topics, question, like conversation starters, just in case we wanna do like something fun like that. And then Jenga. And then I'm gonna put a long table right here and all of the food can go there. Over here, I ended up adding two chairs, two of my dining chairs. Obviously this is not permanent, but I have it here just so we have extra seating if we all wanna cozy up in one space we'll have the couch and then we'll have these two stools and then the two chairs here and then my couch sits literally like six or seven people like nice and cozy so that's gonna do the trick and then i can always move this stuff right here in the case that we want to play uno or jenga or whatever we have the coffee table to use for that but that way we're all kind of like chilling in one area and nobody feels like they have to be out in the garage or like you know whatever we'll all be kind of hanging here So here's the base that I do the night before. These trays, I showed these in a vlog, I think last year. I will link them if I can find them or I'll link some similar ones, but they've came through. 
because you know you sometimes thanksgiving and christmas and new year's all that stuff you prep your food the night before or the morning of and then you have to reheat it or worry about your guests having their food warm still and so these you can put your food inside there and it has a little knob back here it's the knobs usually in the front but because the extension cords or the cord is short i always turn it backwards that way i can plug in an extension cord and then yeah anyway you put your food in there turn the knob on i think there's like low medium and high heat or like warm something like that put all your different food here and it keeps it nice and warm the only thing i will say is with like meat that does not have juice it can tend to dry it out like if you use this for tacos like an asada and chicken and stuff like that it does kind of dry it out a little bit so you would probably have to find an alternative for that but if you're doing roasted chicken and it has juice you can put some of the juice in there and it does not stick it does not dry out even for the mac and cheese and yams and everything like that that usually does pretty good but i find with like drier meats it does kind of make it dry so just keep that in mind but anyway these have came through and then i usually put the plates right in the beginning of the table that way people can grab their plates grab whatever food they want and then the utensils all the way at the end because that way they know what kind of utensils they will use based on the type of food that there is before i would have everything here and it would just like people would come here people would go over there and it was a mess so i recommend setting up your table by whatever flow you wanted to go and whatever flow makes sense for the type of food and layout that you have so these are not going to go here this is just for the different food that's going to be there but grab their plate grab whatever food they want i don't know if i'm going to use these just yet because i already have that maybe i'll do like some chips or you know just some smaller things here if i do chips it'll probably end up going on the more like snack table over there but i just have these here just in case i need them for whatever so it'll be mac and cheese yams cornbread ham my sister's gonna bring rotisserie chicken but that we're gonna have it in the oven and then i think we have a few extra compartments for extra things you know some sometimes you just gotta put the utensils in a plastic cup because you don't have time to go out and buy a utensil holder and you guys know i'm moving in like a month and there's no point in me getting one so we're just gonna do the old school utensils in a cup situation and then i have actual cups in case people need them some napkins at the end as well i also bought these at the grocery store but i think amazon has them they're just trays so that people can take leftovers home this is a must-have if you're hosting because you do not want to throw a bunch of food away and on top of that you don't want to be left with a bunch of food in general at your house so having trays with lids for people to take home is so key of course you can always just use a good old plate and aluminum foil but this just makes it easier all the way around especially if there's any liquid involved so there is that and i'm gonna probably lay this somewhere i don't know and then I have to get some bags for the little prizes. I've completely forgot. So I might do a Target pickup and include some bags. And then I have the cake, the games. I need to do the centerpieces tomorrow. Stuff's going to get moved around. My cousins are going to bring some things. Like everybody is bringing something. Because for Friendsgiving, I usually like to do it potluck style. And in general, my family usually always helps with something. And they always bring something. So... I'm pretty sure I'm going to add to this and add to that and switch things around. But that way I at least know, okay, I have room to work with and this is kind of the layout I'm going to go for. feeling about this thing being here i'm probably gonna take it off only reason i put it is because i feel like it's too much like yellow 
yellow, yellow, yellow. So I'm not sure if I'll keep that. And then I, I'm waiting for my sister to come. She has the vases for that stuff. It's done. It actually looks cute at night. I think it looks better. In the daytime, it looked a little too warm. But I put the nuts right there so people can eat the plates. And then underneath some of the tables, there are smiley faces. The ones that have a smiley face underneath the tablecloth are the ones that are going to win the prizes. They don't know that yet, but that's going to be like the game. <laughs> so I ended up bringing out a lamp right there. And then I think it looks cozy and cute. That one looks okay, but this one needs to be more. Like on the mm -hmm. Okay. But I think it looks cute. Especially for it being a garage, I think <laughs> it came out pretty good for what it is. So there you go.